We're gonna make some peanut butter and jelly pinwheels, and we're gonna use these new tortillas I found. We tried them out yesterday, and they're not much different than the mission wraps to me. I like the mission ones a little better, um, but these are like less than one carb per little tiny shell. So I'm gonna do three. And what we're going to do, you can easily make your own jelly, by the way. And Anna has a recipe on her page. But we found this at the grocery, and I just thought, being lazy, it'll be easier to just use a pre-made one. But it's super easy to make your own keto jam. You just need strawberries and sweetener. So we're going to put some melted butter on these and just kind of spread it around, whatever. Try what? We'll try the jam by itself while these are cooking. Okay. So we've gotten the outside of these pretty well coated in butter. And we're just going to spread this stuff out. Somebody said this helps me sleep, like watching these videos. So this is what the jam looks like. Oh, wow. And I don't know exactly how I'm going to spread this, like, evenly. It may have been easier to spread the peanut butter first, right? Yes, for sure. Okay, so we're going to set this aside and then spread the peanut butter first. And I tasted the fork a little just now. Somebody said, sleep, it makes me hungry. That's the point of these, to show you that when you're on keto, you can really get a lot of mouth pleasure without eating carbs. Okay. So I'm just going to spread it the best that I can. I'm having a really hard time. But it's already smooth peanut butter. Uh, okay. I don't. You didn't even spread it. Should I like spread it fully? Yeah. Anna's really tired. She's I'm given like up. So tired. I. Okay. Um, this is killing me. The spreading of this peanut butter. Okay. Or a spoon. Oh my god. All right. So now I'm gonna add the jam, back. Like this. And I'm gonna eat this. Hmm. Okay. So now we're gonna roll these things up. And I'm gonna eat this too. I need a napkin. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry that these look crazy. So we're just gonna roll them up. Maybe I should roll like the thicker side first. So like this. And I'm not gonna cut them up because they're already mini. I think this is fine. I also prefer I'm just going to say it um, now, because a lot of people are going to comment, why are you using regular Jif? Uh, speaking to Judy's comment, I prefer natural peanut butter with no ingredients other than peanuts and salt. But the reason I use the Jif Creamy is because this recipe requires the peanut butter to be super smooth. So that's why we are working with this. Okay, so now we have these buttery little rolls. And now we're gonna sprinkle some sweetener on top. Uh, I think you use a little too much butter. I would use a little less butter. Anna says you should probably use less butter for this. Yeah. I agree. Oh. Okay. We're making a paella. Okay. 
So now we just put them on our baking sheet. This is actually the air fryer sheet. Um, so you put them in your air fryer basket. And we're just gonna put them in the air fryer. I don't know, like 380. Here we go. Guys, I had like no energy to do anything tonight. So I really hope these turn out good. Now we're gonna try the the jam. I'm making your nuggets now for dinner. Oh, let's get it. All right, so here's the jam. It's called Good Good. This is not an ad. Um, most of the products you see me post are not ads because I just like buying pre-made things because I'm lazy. Okay. And if I do do an ad, it's because I tried something and genuinely liked it and then like tried to work with that brand. Okay, so, except I have to be honest, a few years ago when I first started getting sponsors, um, I let my greed get the best of me and there was this product called Buddha Bars that I tried out. I didn't think they were gross, but I also didn't think they were amazing. I promoted them and some people tried them and really hated them. And I'm like scarred for life after that experience. I've literally been terrified of promoting something that I'm not like seriously in love with ever since that. So if you see me promoting something, just know I've learned my lesson. All right. And I genuinely like it if I am. So we're going to try this out. See how it tastes. It's okay. Are you supposed to just eat jam by itself though? That's the question. Like how accurate can my um, review of this be? If I'm not eating it on toast or something that I'm used to. And Brooke, we have made homemade jam, which I will say, just eating out of the spoon, the homemade jam is much better than this, which we have a recipe for. Quest cookie cake review. The cake style cookies from Quest, I'm obsessed with, if that's what you're talking about. Like the, the frosted cookies, I really like those a lot. More so than any other Quest product. All right, I don't wanna eat too much of this. I don't know what sweetener they use. They use erythritol. So can't have too much erythritol or else I get a tummy ache. Do you want to try a little bite of this and see what you think? Yeah, like a little bit. Ooh, on cottage cheese. I have not had cottage cheese in several years. Like a tummy ache. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. Oh my God. She tried to take, she tried to like dab her tongue with it and that's what you get. So Anna's like very particular about trying things lately. Um, it's, it's, it's not very strong, it's good. She says it's good, it's not very strong. So yeah. she's like very particular about trying things lately. And she's like, I just want a tiny bite. So I literally give her this much, like. It's because I don't like, I, I generally don't like keto. Desserts. Desserts or like keto packaged desserts or sweet things. Yeah, so I try to give her like this much, right? And she like just goes to put her tongue up to it. And then the little glob of jam I tried giving her fell onto her white blanket that she's like obsessed with. So that is what you get for like not just taking a bite. What is the name of your book again? It's called Breaking Up With Carbs. It's right here, has over a hundred recipes. Um, 60 days worth of meal plans. Everything you need to know about getting started on keto. Uh, you did miss dinner, Burn. We ate at, she ate Chipotle. I had leftover tuna salad earlier. Deanne, so you liked our jam better than this one. 
We need your book. Go to Amazon, get it. Yeah, we're gonna have to put a little tie-it eraser on the blanket, Brooke. I have killer diarrhea 11 days in. Any suggestions? Eat more vegetables, more fibrous foods. Um, could be consuming too much MCT oil. That will send you to the bathroom. What do you put in your tuna salad? Uh, we posted it last night. Since we have peanut butter here, why not? Mm. Guys, I want to tell you something about flossing my teeth. Um, I haven't talked about this yet. Really because I was waiting to make sure the habit would stick before I started talking about it and then like not sticking to it. So I was listening to a podcast the other day that basically was emphasizing how brushing your teeth is overrated. You really shouldn't even do it two times a day. But what you should do every day is floss. So I started flossing and I was like, I'm just, there's like, it's like a self-help trick that people use is just tell yourself you're going to floss one tooth and then you can stop. So you don't have to floss your whole mouth, just one tooth. So when you go into the bathroom at night before bed and you floss your one tooth, you're definitely going to floss more teeth. So that's kind of what happened to me. It's like I just made myself, all I have to do is floss one tooth. So I go in there every night with just, just got to do one tooth. I usually end up doing 70% of my mouth. And I feel so good about the fact that I implemented that habit. It's not even about the flossing itself or like how it's supposed to be good for you or whatever. It's just the fact that I found a habit that I've never been able to stick to and I actually stuck to it. It just feels really good. Remind me what you are titling the new book, please. It's going to be called Carefree Keto. And you can get the current book, Breaking Up With Carbs, on Amazon. Just got your book on week two of keto. You and Anna have helped me learn going keto can be fun. That's what this is about, making keto fun. All right, let's check out these little pinwheels. Oh, yeah. Would you put these back in for longer? Uh, they look kind of perfect to me. Okay. They look perfect. So they're ready. I'll put them under the light for you guys. Some tips to get into ketosis are if you eat three pounds of bacon, you will immediately get in ketosis. So go to the store, buy three pounds of bacon, eat it, and you will be in ketosis. Um, other tips I would say literally just staying under 25 net carbs a day is going to ensure you'll be in ketosis. But if that's too complicated for you and the idea of net carbs confuses you, my best advice is don't worry about getting in ketosis. Just worry about changing your eating habits to a more low carb lifestyle. Um, I think that people will get a lot more results without over focusing on being in ketosis and more focusing on just eating healthier. So it's like if you're coming from a diet filled with like Big Macs and Oreos and Doritos, it's going to be really hard to just jump straight into 25 net carbs a day. You probably don't even know what a net carb is. But if you're like, I'm just going to pick one meal a day to make more low carb, you're much more likely to have success at that goal. And once you succeed at that goal, it's easier to set other goals and implement them and be successful. So that's kind of my, uh, my feelings. 
is like, don't worry about getting in ketosis until you've learned how to count net carbs. And while you're still like learning how to count carbs and all of that, just celebrate the fact that you're easing into a low carb lifestyle because you'll still lose a lot of weight simply switching to a low carb lifestyle. All right. Oh, diagonally, like this? Will you uh, no, like just, uh, gonna... just look at the screen and tell me if I'm... Okay. Yes. Okay. With a serrated knife, babe. A serrated head knife, okay. Yes. Should I cut them all at once diagonally? No. Okay. Not at once. You're gonna mess them up. You have to fold. You have to fold it. I should have done it on a cutting board, because now the plate is gonna be messy. Okay. There you go. But don't pull it. Oh, this is really hot. Oh my gosh, it's too hot. This was done in the air fryer. Probably six minutes at 380. This sucks. I suck. Okay, here we go. They really don't look that glamorous. There's like no way to make these look pretty. Um, okay. Thank you, Joel. Maybe I'll put them on like a pile of jam. Just to look cool. It just looks so ugly. It's like impossible to make them look nice. I tried to put them on a bunch of jam. It still looks terrible. Whatever. There's like a black hole inside of it. Like you can't even tell there's peanut butter in there. Somebody's asking if you can make your own wraps. I don't know how. I'm sure people do it, but... Um... Ooh, sprinkle powdered monk fruit on them. Good idea. We could probably make like fathead dough wraps. We should try that. Yeah, you can make fathead dough wraps. And then we'll put a little dollop of peanut butter on the other side and sprinkle. I like the powder sugar comment. Thank you. Okay. They actually look pretty good from here. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, like... If we had a piping powder, like drizzling it on top would have been a good idea. Oh, yeah, can, that would be really good. I don't think we've ever had the Halo Top Tops. We don't really buy Halo Tops. I think it tastes like a, I think all of the Halo Tops taste like. Yeah, I'm not super into Halo Top. I like, they have one flavor that I like, and it's the, um, they have a flavor that's really good. Hold on, what is it called? Okay, this looks decent. I'll take a picture of it and then we'll eat. So the Halo Top has one flavor that I like, and it's called, um, fudge. It's not called fudge. I'm... Do you know what I'm talking? It's not banana cream pie. Remember I... 
gosh, I just can't remember the name. Um, yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about. It's that Halo Top? Yeah, there's one Halo Top flavor that I really like. I just can't remember the name. But it, does, it is banana. It's like banana cream. Something it might like be the banana cream pie one. But it has like chocolate in it. Oh, this looks pretty good. Wow. Okay. And there's not hair on it. There's hair on the camera. All right, one more picture. Somebody should come up with a name for these. Like, what would you call these? Are they like crepes? Peanut butter and jelly roll up. Oh, my hand is on it. This picture is fine. All right, let's eat. What's the name of your book? It's called Breaking Up with Carbs. PB&J Taquitos, yes. Flatulas. All right, here we go. <laughs> oh my God. American like cannoli. Actually, speaking of can this is so good. Speaking of cannolis, Maybe though, please, like just try it now. Here, I'll walk no, one over. Don't you don't want to take a little nibble? Not right now. Later. All right, Anna's not gonna tell I us. Want them to, like, fully cool them. Wow, this is so good. Adding the powdered sweetener actually made it taste way better. Mmm. It's gonna be hard saving her one. Mm. I'm like dipping the jam from the plate. You could do this with almond butter, Keto Mama. Mm. Mm. No, I don't wish they made a cookie butter because I probably wouldn't like it. But it would be so nice to have a cookie butter that was good. What's a cookie butter? Like the... Like the Trader Joe's cookie butter or the... I don't know what cookie butter is. cookie butter. Mm -hmm. it's so good. Uh, we probably eat at least like one low-carb tortilla a day. But we don't exceed it really. Unless we do a dessert with them, which is rare. Mm. Oh, BHU makes the keto cookie butter. Maybe I have had it then. Uh, I, don't, I don't think we've had that one. I'm not really, like, I, I know you like the, I know you like their cookie dough. Mm. Their edible cookie dough. And it is good, but I don't really like it. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you mean. It's it's different. It's remember it was like salty. Yeah, it was. It wasn't bad. It was good. It's just there's just something about you know sweets that. Yeah. All right, we're gonna get spiritual with Emma because Harley's locked away in the bedroom, and I had to create a barrier so she doesn't scratch at the door because I have to put her away because she makes these tippy tappy noises. Emma. She's tired. She's tired. No, I got it. All right, we're going to get spiritual. Yo, Lord, please be with Emma and help her calm down for this prayer. And please be with anybody who's struggling on their keto journey and help them realize that they have the power to change their eating habits. Thank you for bringing this amazing community together because we are so blessed to have each other. And most importantly, thank you for giving us life because every day we wake up is truly a blessing and we should never, ever take that for granted. Amen. 
All right, let's get this breathing exercise in. Breathe in feelings of gratitude. Hold it and feel your body relaxing. Breathe out any stress or negativity. Breathe in feelings of inner peace. Hold it and feel your body continuing to relax. Breathe out any tension or anxiety and remind yourself everything's happening exactly as it should be. Breathe in feelings of self-love. Hold it and feel your body continuing to relax. Breathe out any self-doubt or negativity and remind yourself that you are beautiful and you are worthy of reaching your goals. All right, let's get this visualization in. Close your eyes, relax. Imagine that you are at home on the couch and you're craving a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And imagine you have regular non-keto jelly and regular bread in your pantry. And you open the pantry and as you're looking at it, you start thinking about how yummy it would be. But then imagine you take a deep breath and remind yourself, unless I want diabetes, unless I want to put on the pair of jeans I want and not be able to button them, I cannot say that I want this PB&J sandwich. So imagine instead you grab some straws, you grab some sweetener, and you make your own keto jam. And imagine you go to the store and you buy your own keto bread and you make a keto peanut butter and jelly sandwich and you don't feel like you missed out on anything at all. And speaking of visualization, I had a breakthrough moment listening to this podcast the other day. So um, I was shocked to hear this, but listen to this. Whenever you're setting goals, right, we always are told to visualize the outcome, uh, visualize the finish line, visualize succeeding. But they found, which this is crazy, that's beneficial to do like every now and then at the beginning of setting a goal. But to actually increase your chances of reaching the goal, you are much better off by visually imagining what would happen to you if you screwed off, if you did not take the steps to reach your goal, if you failed. So they found that people who visualize failure and what will happen if they don't do the things they need to do to reach their goal, thinking about that is actually twice as effective at motivating you to take action as visualizing yourself succeeding. And one thing they referenced is if you do something that has uh, a dramatic negative consequence, you're going to remember it forever and you're never going to do that thing again. But if you do something that's very rewarding, it's not necessarily going to ingrain into your brain that you have to do that more often because our brains are wired to protect us from threats more so than they're wired to help us pursue goals, especially because the goals we pursue now aren't really necessary for our survival. So whenever you're trying to make sense of like, why aren't you succeeding or what can you do to succeed? It actually helps to get very detailed about what your life will look like if you don't take the steps towards reaching your goal and focusing on the negative aspects of failing because it tricks your brain into taking the action that you need to, or it doesn't even trick your brain. It just, it's like a wake up call. So I used to be pure positivity. Don't think about anything negative, only imagine the positive outcomes. But research shows you're twice as likely to reach your goal if you frequently visualize what will happen if you don't do the things you're supposed to do. And I learned that from a podcast called Huberman Lab. It's really good. It's been like my go-to podcast lately. So, all right, guys, I love you. I believe in you. Emma is trying to play with me. I'll see you tomorrow. Have a blessed rest of your night.